So what are some attacks? You know, I hear this thing called rogue key attack or some guy named Wagner. Like, what is? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Would you want to start? Yeah. I'll, I'll take the rogue key one, and then I'm, I'm going right. to make you talk about Wagner. That one, that's a hard one to explain. Um, so the way that these signature schemes work, both ECDSA and Schnorr, is that you have this, what's called a linear equation, where you have some secret data, you have a message digest, you have uh, basically an, an ephemeral key that we call a nonce. You put them together into a simple equation, you add all the pieces together, and you're off to the races. And when I say add there, I mean like something a little more technical than, than familiar addition, but still it behaves algebraically in the same way, right? If you add three things together, it doesn't matter what order you put them in, you can rearrange them, all that good stuff. So what a rogue key attack is, is when you take one of these multi-signature schemes that Nadav and Jonas was talking about, where you combine three keys from three different parties, say, but however many you want. Let's say you have three parties, they all combine their keys into one. So the goal is you have one key, one signature, but you have three people behind it, right? And the goal, of course, is that you don't want, you want the one key to actually represent the three people, right? Like, certainly they should believe that, but also it should be a true belief. So what you can do during setup, if you're participating in this, say that we wanted to do like Vivek and me and Jonas, we're all doing one of these setups. So the idea is that we would each throw a key in the pot, we would add them all together, and then we'd have our combined key. And then later when we're signing, we would each do a signature, we'd add the signatures together, and then we get a single signature. And we actually have to do that in, in, three, in two stages, right? We, we throw some nonces in the pot, add them up, we throw some signatures in the pot, add them up. Everything's great. The rogue key attack is where what I can do instead is I can wait for both Vivek and Jonas to give me their keys. And then what I do is I make a key, and then I subtract their keys from my key, and then I put that in the pot. And so if you've been following everything, what gets mixed together is my key minus Jonas plus Jonas minus Vivek plus Vivek, and what's left is just me. And so all three of us, well, all three of us contributed something, and we added up something from all three of us, but I kind of gin things up so that everyone else's contributions would be canceled out. And now, if I want to go move the coins without consent from either of them, I can go ahead and do that because ultimately the final key is just me. So that's, that's a rogue key attack. And the way to avoid it is to do what's called re-randomization, where when we mix the keys together, we need to, to um, rather than directly adding them, we need to first multiply them by a random factor, and you have to choose that random factor in a way that, that whenever I try to change what my contribu contribution is, it changes the random factors for every other party. So I can't wait for everyone else to do stuff and then contribute my thing. They, they, we, have to be mix, we have to mix contributions from everybody and so if I try to gin things up, my act of ginning it up will change three randomizers and thereby undermine my, my gin. So, so that's the rogue key attack. So that's one thing that we've had to address as we've developed these multi-signatures.